Hi there and welcome back to Pinch of Cooking. Today we're going to turn these two soda cans into these really fun Squid Game cookie cutters. I'll show you how to make them and once you learn this technique, you could really make any cookie cutter this way. And if you're wondering how to make the actual cookies from the game, I have a separate step-by-step -step recipe video which I will link down below. Let's begin making our cookie cutters. So let's start by cutting off the top. I find it easier to make a hole with a knife, just uh, large enough to insert the scissors, and then take the scissors and cut it all around. Be careful not to touch the edges as you're cutting. They are sharp and jagged and you really can hurt yourself. Trust me, it's way worse than the paper cut. Once the top is off, we're gonna turn this around and cut down the side at a 90 degree angle. Next, we go around and cut off the bottom of the can. You now have a rectangular sheet of metal. I rinsed the can out before I even started cutting it, but now we just have to take a piece of paper towel and wipe down any moisture left behind. So let's clean this up by cutting off the rough edge. And then we could just straighten out the sheet by bending it the other way and going over the edge with it. Now pick a ruler that's not too wide. The width of the ruler will determine the height of the cookie cutter. And the top of the sheet does not need to be perfectly straight because we will be folding it over. On the other side of the ruler, with a pen or a pencil, draw a line and cut down the line as neatly as you can. So now let's flatten out our folded top and we have a strip ready to make a cookie cutter. You will need four of these metal strips for the four cookies from the Squid Games. First, we'll make the easiest shape, the circle. I find it easier to wrap it around a glass for the metal to regain its cylindrical shape. Once we get the strip rounded, let's open up the fold on one of the edges and push the other side under it. We are looking for the sharp bottoms to line up so we can have a perfect circle to imprint on our cookies. I'm looking for the diameter of the circle to be two inches or five centimeters. Once our circle looks good, let's secure the seams on the inside and the outside with scotch tape. Scotch tape holds it really well together. Our circle cookie is done and the next shape up is going to be triangle. To make the triangle, we're gonna measure out three equal sides of two inches, which is, as you remember, the same thing as five centimeters. Draw lines every two inches to help you cut evenly, and don't forget to leave a little room for the folding. The folding part came out a little bit too long, so we're just gonna cut it down to a more manageable size. When folding the corners, it helps to use a flat, non-sharp tool like this offset spatula. You would get really nice, crisp corners that are not too sharp. The metal does tend to weaken when folded, so I put scotch tape around each corner so it doesn't snap apart. Fold the other two corners the same way, and I'll show you how to connect it. Similar to the circle cutter, we will lift the folded edge, slide the extra piece right under it, and make, while making sure the edge is perfectly lined up, and then secure both sides with scotch tape. The triangle is done, so let's start working on our square. The good news about the square is the same steps as a triangle, just with slightly different measurements and of course additional side. The measurements for each side are going to be one and a half inches or 3.75 centimeters. To make things easier if you're working in centimeters, just make it four. I have here my four sides measured out. I'm leaving a small folding edge and cut off the other part that we don't need. 
fold each one of your corners just like we did on the triangle and don't forget to put the scotch tape on the outside of the corners to make them stronger. So now we just lift up the folded edge, slide the other side in, and the square is almost ready. Just put in some scotch tape on the outside and the inside of the seam to secure it. So now all our easy shapes are done, and now we must bring out our best origami skills to fold an umbrella cookie cutter. We are starting with the metal strip and we're going to fold it, but not exactly in the middle. The fold is a little bit off center in order to make a folding edge. Let's make our fold neat and even with our small spatula. Even it out with your hands and of course put a piece of scotch tape over it. It will prevent the fold from getting stressed and breaking open. Gently pull the sides apart and now we will have to make a fold on each side equidistant from the folded center. These folds will mark the end of the umbrella top. I eyeballed this distance when I was making it, but the actual measurement is just slightly under 2 inches or 5 centimeters. If you noticed, I folded both sides at the same time to make sure they're exactly the same distance. Right away, go in with your scotch tape around the bends. The first time I was making this umbrella, I bent it back and forth too many times and the whole side just broke off. So scotch tape here is the key and not overworking your angles is also very important. Start gently bending the sides of the umbrella top to regain the rounded shape. Don't worry if it's not perfectly rounded just yet. We will continue shaping it as we work more on it. Now let's work on the leg of the umbrella. Fold over the folding edge that we left behind. Now make a gentle fold where you think the umbrella ends and the leg begins. Don't worry about the exact measurements here, we're just trying to give us a general shape to shape the leg. Now slide the folding edge under the edge of the other side just like we did with all the other shapes previously and right away secure the edge with scotch tape on the inside and on the outside. I keep gently shaping it with my fingers so it takes more and more of an umbrella shape as we go along. Just think of it as metal clay. Now. We're going to work on our umbrella bottom. The bottom needs a handle at the end, so I will use a pencil to round up the end and bend it slightly to the side to create that umbrella handle look. It does take a couple of tries to get it right, so just be patient and keep molding it to get the shape you want. At this point, if you've had enough of folding, you could just round up the umbrella sides and use it as it is. It's already a cute umbrella shape as it is. But I want it to look like just like it did in the squid movie. So I'm going to take it a step further and go ahead and create folds in the bottom of the umbrella top. Any thin round object will do for this job. So I grabbed a round chopstick. So place the chopstick close to the corner, wrap the metal halfway around the stick and then bend it backward like an accordion. For the second fold, we start with wrapping the metal halfway around the stick, but then instead of bending the edge back up like we did in the first fold, we manipulate the edge to have a slight bend pointing down and kind of blending into the leg. If the folds get out of shape while doing this, just use your stick and bend the back into shape. Now go ahead and finish the other side of umbrellas the same way as we did the first one. Bend and shape any side that looks misshapen or uneven. And once you're happy with the overall shape of the umbrella, we're ready to make some cookies. Now follow me to the next video where I will teach you my easy foolproof 
recipe for Dalgona cookies. Thank you so much for watching and I'll see you in the next video.